What's up everybody, my name is Dan On. welcome to Honestly. The Razer Isker V2 has the best lumbar support and the best lower back to mid back support I've tested on any racing style gaming chair. But this chair has some real drawbacks that you need to be aware of before picking it up. Is it worth it? Let's get honest. I get it. Chair videos aren't that oh, sexy man. of a topic for a YouTube channel, oh, but man. they are essential for long work days and long gaming sessions, which is why I am passionate about you finding the right chair for you. This is the reason why I bought this chair with my own money out of my own pocket to review, to inform you all about whether or not it would be a good fit for you all. So if you appreciate that, I'm almost at 100,000 subs. I would love if you guys could get subscribed. If not for me, do it for baby Leo. Please subscribe to my dad. He's so cool and awesome, even though I've only been alive for three weeks, so I really don't have no idea, but you know, subscribe. If you didn't subscribe for that, you're a monster. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I'll, links to everything also will be in the description and pinned comment, everything you see here. Please consider using them. I don't ask you all for money because these chairs are expensive enough as it is, but when you use those links, I earn a small commission, which allows this channel to keep on going and allows me to review things like this so that you don't waste your hard-earned money. Instead of my usual total breakdown of a chair, I want to give my pros and cons about this chair. I think that makes the my thoughts on this a little bit more packageable, a little bit more manageable. So we'll start with the pros, the things I really like about this chair. And I've already kind of mentioned it at the beginning, the lumbar support on this chair. I really, really like this thing. The way that it works is that this piece right here is actually separate from the chair. And as you can see, it kind of wobbles here. And what that allows you to do is that when you sit inside of the chair, it allows you to actually get some freedom of movement inside the chair because this thing will flex and move with you as you move. And it feels really nice. Not only that, but this thing has a nice little rounded bump here, which kind of fits into that rounded curve of your lower back. And it kind of flows up nicely. And this is what I meant earlier again, that it's got really nice lower back to mid back support because this thing here kind of rests all along that spine, all along your back, and it feels pretty good. As a matter of fact, it even helps encourage proper posture when sitting in your chair. Because when you go ahead and sit like this, when you slouch inside of your chair, what happens? Your spine kind of juts out, and this thing, because it's slanted up like this, if you actually do that, it doesn't move with your spine backwards. So what happens is you end up digging your spine into this backrest thing here, and it actually feels really uncomfortable. So the best way and the most comfortable way to sit in the chair is to have your back completely touching this back pad here, which again encourages good posture inside of this chair. Another big pro about this chair is that the lumbar adjustments that are found here by your love handles on the right side and on the left side, I don't know if you have love handles, I got lot to love here. Uh, these knobs, they're not only really easy to use, but they also make a noticeable difference as you make adjustments. 99% of the racing style gaming chairs out there that have lumbar adjustments, I found are really difficult to turn. Like these knobs can be really tricky, really difficult, really hard to crank and turn with your wrists. And also when you turn them, you barely feel any kind of real adjustment unless you go to the, uh, the, the total extreme. With these, I found that with just a couple turns, you start to feel a noticeable difference. So on the right side here by your right love handle, this thing is going to give you more aggressive lumbar support or less depending on what you want. And then over here on the left side, your left love handle, this thing is going to raise or lower that lumbar support. I personally like it with everything set at base zero. So with the lumbar support completely in as well as the lumbar support completely low. If you've ever wanted to nap inside of your chair, the Razer Isker V2 is the one to do it in because this thing can lay down to 152 degrees. Now for those of you who've forgotten geometry, 180 degrees is a straight line. So when I go ahead and tilt it down, you can see that this thing goes down pretty freaking far. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty much the furthest laying chair I've ever tested. and. Yeah, you could definitely take a nap like this if you really wanted. The sizing on this chair is also pretty cool as well. Let me go ahead and lock this just so that you guys can see. So I'm five foot six, and most racing style gaming chairs are just big. And so if you're five foot six, that's like the bare minimum cutoff. But I will say of all the racing style gaming chairs that I've tested, the Razer Isker V2 is the first racing style gaming chair where my feet touch the floor comfortably. So it is good for people that are five foot six. I would say that's the minimum height here again, but comfortably, not like stretching 
game. Not only if you have long legs and you're five foot six. I think anybody who's five foot six, because I got shorter legs, uh, you will feel comfortable in this chair. The general practice, best practice, is that you're able to fit two fingers behind your knee pits and the front edge. I can fit one, it's not too bad, but my, again, my feet are laying comfortably on the floor. I would say the maximum height for this is probably gonna be around six foot two. I'll explain why. Uh, Razor says this can be from five foot three to six foot seven. I'm gonna say no, I don't think that's the case. I'll explain why in the con section. So five foot six to six foot two, I think is the ideal height for this chair. And just to be clear, this thing can get pretty big as well because the height adjustment on this is massive. But when I go ahead and raise it all up, I feel like a tiny little kid inside of a chair. I mean, the armrest goes super high, the, the cylinder goes super high as well. But I do think it's got some limitations, which is why I cap it at six foot two. And the last thing I really like about this chair is actually the headrest. I don't like that it's not a magnet like you get on most other racing style gaming chairs, but I love the way that this is designed. First of all, the plushiness of it, the softness of it is really, really good. Some racing style gaming chairs, they come with a cushion that's just too thick, and so it ends up forcing your head and your neck into a position that you don't really want. This one is super duper soft, and it'll kind of conform to wherever you want it. But also, I like that it's tall, because you see here, this little round bump will fit into that curvature of your neck here, and then this flat part gives you actual head support. So you're not just, you know, having something on your neck and then your head just touches nothing or air. As you can see, my neck kind of goes in that curvature and then my head has something to lean on. And this is especially good if you're, you know, tilted back in your chair, then you're able to get something touching and fitting inside of that neck really well and then supporting the back of your head really well. And this pillow, I really like it. It's really well designed. It's not a magnet, but again, I'm okay with that because you can just easily just kind of pull it up and down pretty quickly and adjust it exactly how you want. Moving on to the cons. The summary of the cons is that while the lumbar support and lower back, mid back, feels like it's you know moved ahead in the industry, the rest of the chair feels like it's taken a couple steps back, especially when it comes to the seat. This seat cushion is incredibly firm, but that's not even the worst part. The worst part is that when I sat in the chair, as soon as I assembled it, not after the many hours I sat on it, but as soon as I assembled and I sat on it, I felt this weird round bump on my butt. And I got out of the chair and I went ahead and pushed down on this seat cushion here and I felt the hard bottom. That means that this chair bottoms out really, really easily. Razor recommends a weight limit of 300 pounds. I weigh 169 pounds and I felt that bottom. So yeah, it's definitely not gonna reach there. I don't know what a safe rec weight recommendation for this chair is. I just know that if you can feel the bottom now, that's not going to improve over time. If anything, it's gonna get worse because seat cushions flatten over time. The other con about the seat is that these, I, I love that compared to the V1, they really lowered the bolsters here, right? There's no hard bolsters on the side anymore. And yeah, when you sit inside the chair, you can spread your legs a little bit, but these side bolsters here are still really stiff. And so what that means is a couple things, is that while you can open up your legs a little bit, you can't open them all the way because it starts to dig into your calf. And it also affects people who are uh, ergonomic rebels, people who like to sit single-legged or people who like to double tuck. Because when you sit like this, what's gonna happen is that because this is so stiff, even though it doesn't hurt, your ankles are forced upwards. They kind of bend upwards like this because of this bolster here. And it doesn't make it the most comfortable for long sitting sessions for people who like to curl up inside of the chair. The next con is that while the lumbar support does feel great, I wish that it could go a little bit lower. It feels like it's sitting just a tad bit high for me. I wish it could sit just a, like maybe a half inch lower would be great and unfortunately doesn't go that low. But that is negligible compared to the design of the backrest here. I feel like a lot of racing style gaming chairs are moving forward by allowing you to sit openly and freely inside of the chair, but the Razer Iskra V2, you feel trapped inside of this thing. Remember how I told you that this thing allows you to have freedom of movement inside of the chair? You do until you move a little bit extra and then your arm crashes into the side. So as you're sitting in the chair and you're moving, you can move, but you can see that I'm kind of crashing into either side of the edge. You don't feel like you're able to fully turn out inside of this chair. As a matter of fact, when I go ahead and spread my arms open like this, try to spread my chest open with sitting up like this, I can't because my arms, the, my triceps are slamming into the side of this chair. The side bolsters are just too curved in. And while you don't feel turtled, you don't feel free either. I feel like, ah, just, if you could just open these up a little bit, then I could open the arms and then it would have been a really great backrest design. This thing feels like it's stepping backwards in the racing style gaming chair design that allows for more ergonomically proper sitting inside of these chairs. It's a real shame because again, man, this backrest lumbar just feels so good. And it, I love that it allows you to move like this, but you just, 
I just you just need a little bit more movement inside of these chairs, man. This is also why I said this probably isn't for the tallest of folks because if I'm crashing into these sides right now and I'm five foot six, if you're six foot three, six foot four, I can imagine that your arms are gonna be crashing into this outer edge part and that's not gonna be really comfortable for you. The standard warranty on the Isker V2 is three years. That is significantly better than the Razer Fujin Pro that I tested and reviewed where they offer a one year warranty on the mesh, which is just absolutely pitiful. Three years is okay and if you jump through some social media hoops, I think you can increase it to five years. So the big final question, would I recommend the Razer Isker V2? And these are the moments that really break my heart because I'm gonna make zero money from this video even though I spent all this money to make the chair and to edit this video and record all of it. I'm gonna make zero because I cannot in good conscience recommend this chair because the seat cushion is too firm and then the seat instantly bottoms out. You feel a rounded bump on your butt. I can't recommend this to anyone, especially when I know what else is out there for 650 bucks. So guys, if you appreciate this honesty, please get subscribed to this channel. Please check out my other videos, my ultimate chair buying guide for 2023 to 2024. Check that video out, it'll be over here use my links again really helps keep this channel going really helps me to recoup costs from videos like this until next time stay safe and as always stay honest